and sorry. So anyway, so number one, pray for wisdom. Number two, make whatever you choose to do concrete, not abstract, so that it's very clear what the expectations are. The third thing that I want to just remind you is about whatever you choose to implement, try to do it in a time of non-conflict. We talk about that in lesson two, so I won't get into that, but that's just when we're upset with our kids or they're upset with us, that's not the time to teach them how we want to do something as a family, right? We're There's a lot of emotion and, and uh, things going on. So just re remember that, that idea and, and think about it for yourself. You know, when somebody's coming to you, trying to help you overcome something or create a new habit in your life, you don't necessarily want to hear it when you're upset. It's like it's better in a time where you guys, you're not heated and you can talk about it. And then the last thing is having lots of grace on one another in the family, especially if this is something that's new. Uh, you know, we just have to give each other a lot of grace. Yeah. Uh, it took Dave and I, you know, when we decide anything in our home that we want to implement with our children, we decided to do it with each other. So when we wanted to start resolving conflict uh, and become a characterization in our family, we had to create new habits and how Dave and I were responding to each other and how we were making it right. And uh, we didn't do it right a lot and neither do our kids and that's okay. But we kept going back to why are we doing this and what's the good, you know, what's the moral reason why. And with, with teens, if this is something you're starting later, it's just so important to keep helping them understand the beauty behind why it's so beneficial. It's not a rule. You're not trying to make a regulation must be done this way. It's really about restoring and resolving conflict, which we're not getting into the moral reason why. And I'd like the Ramirez's, um, they, sh they shared last time too about what do you do when you start late? So again, they had an adult child and a, a 12 year old. So anything else you guys wanna add about maybe apologizing if you haven't been doing this, what, what were some things you guys would add? You talked about, you talked about us, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we shared about this in the last session, but I, I think what really helped us um, for, well, I think even, whether it's for parents that are starting late or even um, uh, just parents that are starting this process, regardless of the age of the child, I think it's always beautiful to show humility. Uh, it, we didn't have a choice. We, we, we didn't have a choice because we didn't, we were learning something new. And so we were, we did our best to show humility with our son. That went a long way with him um, in that um, we, and in, in we basically sat down with them and said, look, we, it, we sat down with our daughter that was older as well and, and said, um, look, we, we know we've not done it the right way before. Um, we want to do it a, a better way, a more beautiful way. And um, we're in, we want to, start learning this process. And, and it was more of like an invitation uh, for us to partner with each other. And uh, I think it helped out tremendously in that we were able to uh, essentially learn with them. And uh, it I think it helped uh, bring down any kind of barriers or any kind of, a, um, it allowed for, for them to be more emotionally invested in, in the process. And uh, and so what we would do is we would just say, look, we would we would uh, we're learning ourselves. So as my, as we're going to be grace showing grace to you, um, please be patient with us because we're learning this process. And um, so we would even sit down and, and watch some of the videos together when we first starting this. This was when our son was 12 at the time. He's 14 now. Um, our daughter was 24 at the time. Um and so we, we would even watch some of the videos together um, to show that, hey, this is us learning this new process. I think it went a long way in helping them uh, feel more invested in the process. Um, thank you, guys. And the only thing I wanted to, to add to that, and then we'll move on to question two. I shared this in the last group. I don't feel like I'll need to share it in the next group, which is parents of zero to five. Uh, for obvious reason. But if you have not yet required of your child to sit, process, you help them process what's in their heart, move from worldly to godly sorrow, confess vulnerably, seek forgiveness. Like if they're not in that habit and maybe the paradigm in your house, maybe the habit in your house has been to lecture and punish, 
Um, and as a result, you are trying to implement these biblical principles, but you just feel like you you cannot get through the hurt with your child. Um, I just want to make sure that you know that there is no shame in that mm -hmm. and that there are going to be some families uh, who need assistance in breaking through that. Mm -hmm. And if that happens to be you, then I would beg of you to please reach out and, and let us or others help you guys get through that. We spend a lot of our time meeting with families that are in that situation that need help getting in good habits, largely with, with children in this age range, because the children aren't used to it. And there's there can be a lot of wounds, a lot of bad habits. And so I know on our videos, we talk a lot about these biblical principles and how they should look. And that can inadvertently leave some parents feeling, uh, you know, left behind. And we want to make sure that we do not do that. If you find yourself really working hard to implement these biblical principles and and yet you your child, you just can't get there with your child, mm -hmm. reach out, get help, um, and we'll help you guys. Uh, you know, we'll pray for a lot of wisdom, ask God for his intervention, but do everything we can to help you guys get into good habits. And sometimes it's helpful to have a third party um, that gets involved and helps mend those relationships because doing this really is uh, a lot about trust and about your family being safe. Um, and that does not just happen overnight. So I just want to make sure we've said that so that, you know, if you happen to be in that position, there's no shame in that. Get help and let's move on. One of my favorite stories is of Andy and Lori Holtzclaw, um, who had a teenage daughter. They felt like nothing they did was breaking through. They moved down here to get help, did get help. Uh, their daughter became a Christian about a year later maybe maybe two years yeah, later <laughs> and now we keep hearing that she's like the number one person that travels around the church and keeps sharing her testimony about how her relationship was healed with her parents so they shared at the retreat they shared at the retreat so it's it's not too late just get help and um and we'll we'll work through that together as a body of christ so so number two okay so Question number two make is, uh, how do we help our children move from regret to repentance? So the sires are going to share, and if you guys have an example of teens, uh, that would be great. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Just reminding uh, you, yeah. it's a teen class. And you got to yeah. come up with one right now. Okay. <laughs> they have um, five kids. You've got some examples. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think at, at any age, I think it's just kind of easy to go through the motions, you know? And so this has been something for me that I've really had to work at is just really making sure that I'm getting to my child's heart and really reaching godly sorrow. And so I think for something that's been helpful for me is just making sure that I'm not only being mindful of what they're saying, but how they're saying it. So the tone in which they're saying it, as well as, you know, just like nonverbal cues, like the look on their face and, I, you know, just their overall demeanor. I think we can tell, you know, when our, our child is, is um, you know, is, is sorrowful or if they're just, if they're not, you know, if they're, if they're being prideful. And so, um, you know, I think it's important to remember that we're just trying to help them connect how their behavior is really hurting or damaging that relationship. And so just asking um, lots of questions. So the, the, the one that we often ask the most, and the first question we ask, how would you feel if someone did that to you? And then I think quickly following up, um, with saying like, well, why, why would that, why would that be hurtful? And I think um, we shared this in the last class, but you know, I think there's times where we will like, we'll use, so if a child like does something to the, another, you know, to their sibling, that may not be something that bothers them. So if we say, Hey, how would that make you feel? There, there's been times where they said, I wouldn't care. Like I, I wouldn't feel hurt by that. So then we have to be like, okay, well, you know, because I think, you know, obviously in a family of seven, there's just lots of different dynamics, there's lots of different temperaments and personalities. And so, you know, I think it's important to just cater the questions to that child. You know, I, I think we all, you know, strive to be experts on our, you know, on our children. And so I think knowing what, the, what makes them tick and what, what I think all, I think we could all, you know, figure out what, what hurts that particular child or what would hurt that child. So I think I've just had a kind of get creative in the questions that I do ask to make sure it's really catered to that particular child. And, um, you know, I think like Tammy said, praying for lots of wisdom, it's not as straightforward, obviously, as when they're little and you're really just focusing on the outward behavior. And, um, 
And just knowing too, that it, it just takes a while, you know, I think there's um, like, I, I think for those of you that watched the, um, the video with uh, the Hurleys, that just makes it seem very simple and straightforward. And it will oftentimes take much, much longer than that. You know, there's times where, yeah, our, we've got two, uh, we've got two teens in the, in our house, so two in this age range. And there's times where they are really humble and they, they come back very quickly and make things right. And, but then there's times where it, it will, it will take, you know, a much longer than that. And so, um, I think too, just, um, in, in that same vein, just really being like patient and gentle and showing lots of empathy while they're working through, like, you know, like, I think I can just very quickly, you know, get irritated if it's taking a while, but I think just being like, okay, like, I think, um, Lisa did a really beautiful job at that, you know, just her overall tone, you know, when she, when she was speaking to her child, even then the child was being very combative and just defensive, you know, I think, you know, I think our, we can really set the tone and really de-escalating things if a child is being, you know, very defensive and prideful. And so I think that will go a long way too. And the thing I'll add is, um, is yeah, for this, this age, they tend to focus on themselves. And so, and that's really, you know, regret is when we're focusing on ourselves where we want them to actually think about how it impacts the other person. And yeah, sometimes it takes a lot of time and lots of, Lots of uh, questions need to be asked, uh, I think, uh, is something that's really important. I think the one thing for our families, we just wanted to, we committed early on just that we're not going to have any unresolved conflict, um, and our kids know that as well. And so however long it's going to take is, is what we, you know, it, it could take, you know, long, and sometimes we have to put it on pause because, like, you know, we have different things that we're going to, whether it's, you know, sometimes this happens right before church. I don't think, I don't know if you guys could relate. Uh, to that, but sometimes we have conflict right before church, but we want to still be on time. So, but we're going to, we're not going to just push it under the rug. We're going to go back to that and deal with it at a different, at, at a later time. Um, but I think that's really important as a family is to commit to making sure we don't have unresolved conflict, uh, no matter how long of time it's going to take. Um, you know, and you know your kid if they're really, um, yeah, if they're, like Bree said, if they're really having godly sorrow versus not, uh, don't rush it, you know make sure that we we actually get to their heart excellent great did you have a question yeah well and i hate to throw tracy out just yeah put her on the spot but tracy how do you do that pursuing are you getting your master's i forget you're getting yes so how are you doing that working full-time how are you getting to your kid's heart you have two adult children um and then you have a, a teen right now how do you do that with your busy schedule um that is a really good question. In fact, I think that when life gets this busy, it's very easy to, um, I, I heard say, I heard it said, you know, like sweep things under the rug or just say, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I think, you know, I'm just not going to deal with that. But what we, well, what I asked the my kids and they, I've got a 20, we're all, they're all in the house, but I've got a 26 year old, a 22 year old and a 17 year old who's a senior. And so we've started having family meetings on Sunday evenings um, because it's not just me being busy or who's busy, they're busy as well. They've got, I mean, my 26 year old and my 22 year old are working. Um, my daughter is an AP art, and so she's got like, you know, all these um, projects that she, and ideations and things that I don't even understand because I'm not an artist. She's got her things going on. And I often feel like, or for a while, I was feeling like we're just going in so many different directions that um, I feel like God really was talk, speaking to me, talking to me and telling me, you know, we've got we've to gotta set some time to, uh, aside. That's really sacred time that um where we can come together and really talk through and and it's a calm time um i don't remember i'm sorry i don't remember who said it but just create a safe space where we can come together and talk about difficult subjects and so that's what we've started doing um sunday nights and because two of them are adults and the youngest is 17 and they're you know really living their lives as adults I don't try to impose things on them. I, I, I try to 
Um, I mean, they know that I'm really trying to give it, convince them to do what I want them to do. <laughs> but I really do try to give them a voice at these ages and um, respect them as adults or young adults who have their own feelings and their own thoughts. I try not to bring judgment into it, although you'd have to talk to them to, <laughs> to see how well I'm doing on it. But that's that's what I had to do. I had to um, uh, bring us together as a family so that we could have some family time to come together and deal with these tough issues. But moving, so I don't really feel like I can move them from regret to re repentance anymore. I feel like at this point, um, the best that I could do is really just try to model this, right? Like when, when I have sinned against them, I feel the best that I can do is try to model that to them. And I am far from perfect in this area, but I feel like my own example and my own model is, is, is powerful. Just like when I see other people doing it, I feel like their examples are very powerful to me. And so I definitely try not to give just lip service, you know? I mean, like at this point, all I have is my relationship with them. Um, and I have to parent from, well, I, I hope to parent from the strength of my relationship and not just from um, authority. And I don't know if I'm just rambling or if that makes any sense, but yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I can move them anymore. It's their choice. They now have choices. Yeah. to me even though we're in the same you know home and it's my house like the whole you know this is my house and <laughs> you need to do things the way that I would that doesn't help that doesn't help strengthen our relationship and I find well I have tried that and it just doesn't work yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so what I love about what you're sharing Tracy is one what Tammy said at the very beginning that what you saw in that video about a mom that sends her child to think, comes back, sends her to think, comes back, sends her to think, this is going to look different in different houses, depending on what your life situation is, mm -hmm. right? It's okay. God gives us that freedom uh, to implement his principles in a manner that that his wisdom provides in our life. So I, I want to make sure we highlight that, but I also want to highlight that Tracy is now in a life situation with a 17, 22, and 26-year-old where everything she's built to date is now having to pay off, Yeah. right? By, by teaching her children this as they were being raised, right? Despite some difficult circumstances, um, now she has the strength of relationship to lead them. So this stuff, it, it really does matter, Um Tammy said this on the previous call that what you are doing with them now is going to be who they are in their future marriage, who they are when their campus minister sins against them, who they are when they feel like their church has sinned against them, who they are when they feel like God is allowing bad things to happen to them. I mean, what you do at home is going to matter as they enter the adult years. So thank you, Tracy, for um, sharing that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I just no. want to add, we have uh, two adult children and they don't live here anymore. Well, none of my kids do. I have three adult children. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. Um, <laughs> she's in the other room. Anyway, um, so I did want to just throw this out there. We still have conflict and I yes. still need to make it right with them or they hurt my feelings and I still, still need to talk it through so we have a safe relationship. And what I do is I set up, I still get time with them one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. And I, when I can, it's like maybe once a month mm -hmm. uh, because they don't live here and they work, they have jobs and school. school and then one plays soccer for her college. And so they're all very busy, like Tracy talked about, but I do set up time. And then I kind of have a list if there's something I'm hurt and need to resolve, because again, parents aren't punching bags. We have feelings too. And to have a safe relationship, we need to be able to be honest and open mm -hmm. too. And then also, but it's done with kindness and love. I don't treat my children any any different than I would treat one of you. So if you hurt my feelings, I would come to you and talk about it. Um, so it's the same thing. But with a younger uh, teen, let's say uh, they're 15 and they're going off to soccer practice and you don't have time to address a behavior, you know, one thing that's on the video that we recommend is just, you know, just let them know like, hey, we need to talk about this later. You don't need to be harsh and rude and unkind 
Ephesians 4.29 should govern what we say. And then um, you could, but you write it down. I did. I, I made notes with alarms because if you do ignore a lot of stuff, it doesn't go away. It just stays there and festers. So um, we just, we would always go back and at, when we had the time, but I, I found if I tried to rush these conversations when we were busy, it, I ended up causing them pain. I'd end up sinning against them. I usually say something rude or unkind. So just last week, I'll give an example. Uh, my One of my adult daughters, she made this comment. She still drives our minivan because we can't, you know, we can't afford to get her a car. And uh, so she's, and she doesn't have the money because she plays soccer for her, her college. So she kind of, she has been amazing about it, by the way, just amazing her attitude about it. But she had made this comment like, oh, I can't wait to get a car. And I judged her right away. And I was like, well, don't be entitled. Like, I just spurted out this uh, judgment that, uh, and I can't remember if that's exactly how she said it, but she just made a comment that triggered something in me. And when I was, and she looked at me like kind of shocked and she goes, you know, mom, that really hurt my feelings. She goes, I try so hard to have a good attitude. I'm in college and I'm driving a minivan around with my soccer teammates. It's really hard on me. And when you made that comment about me being entitled, it made me sad. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Why did, I don't know where I did that. And I said, let me go. I'm just so sorry. Please forgive me. And the beauty of it, one is, guys, we're going to sin as parents, right? And But if you have a process, your child will get in that habit mm -hmm. of coming to you and saying, hey, when you, you know, when you spoke to me like that, that really hurt. If my daughter hadn't gotten open, where would our relationship be right now? You know, she would just want to get further and further away from me um, and want nothing to do with her mom who just said the rudest thing. And I was, I don't know why I did that, but I just went to her. I said, please forgive me. And um, I just got teary eyed because when she explained to me how hard she works to have a good attitude about a minivan, I was like, oh, that makes it even worse. So we're going to mess up as parents. Our, our kids are going to mess up. But if you have that, you have a plan of how to resolve conflict, even in the adult years, when you sin against your kid, they know to come talk to you. And she could have gone and talked to her soccer friends about me or her sisters or her dad, but she came to me immediately and said, mom, that really hurt my feelings. And anyway, so I just wanted to share that we mess up all the time still. Yep. Um, and But I'm just so grateful that um, it's okay to mess up in our house because we know how to make it right when we do, so. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, uh, next question. What do you do if your child says, I'm sorry, but doesn't also confess what okay. they did wrong? So I just wanna add, this is in the video about, and so um, I think the Ramirez, you signed up to share about this. Can you share why in the teen years you think it is helpful that the child not only says I'm sorry or will you forgive me, but actually adds why they did what they did. What what is the confession? Where are the Ramirez? Uh, yeah, we're oh. right here. Uh, well, I think for us, uh, because we do have a, a son that's older, um, it's important for us to draw his heart out to find out, well, why? I mean, by this point, he already knows, you know, why uh he did what he did but i would say that even though they are still older we did have to explain to him the whole process of what it looks like to restore a relationship and so i would say it doesn't really matter how old the child is especially if they're older I think it's important that they be taught what the expectation is, what the process of restoring the relationship is and why it is important. So once we've established that um, at this point, he comes to me and he'll say, I'm sorry. He still will say that sometimes. I'm sorry, mom. And then I say, well, son, can you explain to me why were you, why are you sorry about and so he'll say, you know, well, I'm really sorry because um, that wasn't kind what I said to you that was hurtful. And, you know, I, I didn't listen the first time, depending on what it was. And um, he will go ahead and say, will you please forgive me? And so I think it's really important because they need to know why they're apologizing and 
the uh, virtue that was missed. Um, and of course, we've taken the time to talk about virtue, to talk about the moral reason why. Um, and so I think that's why it's really important when he comes to me and just says, I'm sorry, and doesn't confess what they did wrong, uh, either they are not in touch with their feelings or what they how they've sinned against you or maybe it could be like a pride issue maybe they just don't want to admit that they were wrong or um yeah it, it just depends on so many different things and I think it's really really important to deal with the heart and helping them recognize and verbally say what they did um, otherwise, you're not really getting to to their heart. Excellent. That's great. Thank you, Veronica. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, next question. What do I do if my child will not go sit for the purpose of reaching godly sorrow? And Raul. That is Raul. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say uh, the thing that came to mind here, I mean, we... If the child is not willing to sit, um, we've not been in a position where that's happened. Um, but I think it's because we we made it a point to invest the time ahead of time uh, and and do the like my wife was talking about is sitting down and teaching during times of non conflict. The more you do that, um, the the easier it'll become over time. It is just like, I, I think, uh, Tammy, I think you even shared something about this a long time ago that really stuck stuck with me is the idea of, you know, um, that, you know, just brushing your teeth is, is something that you don't really have to go into the reason of moral reason why at first you just basically instill the, the, the habit, you instill the habit, they may not really fully understand why it's important to brush your teeth, but you instill the, in the into them the habit of brushing their teeth. And then later on, uh, the heart follows. And then you understand, well, it's important for hygiene. It's the whole idea of being considerate of others when you're talking to them face to face. It's, you know, there's all these other things, right? And so I think it's, it's if when you really focus on teaching the moral reason why and showing them the concrete uh, uh, steps of how to restore the relationship uh, and just forcing the habit, not forcing, but really emphasizing the habit, eventually over time, um, it will come to pass where they will actually, a light bulb goes off in their head and says, yeah, this is important for the sake of the relationship. Um, it, one of the things that um, the Centellan shared in the last session really struck me, and it was something that I think we're both guilty of, is the idea that um, this whole idea of, of um, sitting down and reflecting, um, it, it, we have been guilty of saying it in such a way where it, it, it's seems like punishment mm -hmm. um we'll say it and like well i guess we're gonna i guess you need son you need to go and have a, a time of reflective time but it's a in a firm um I, i'm in an upset state or whatever and and so that could also be you have to also think about how is it that you're conveying this um are you conveying it in a in a more neutral way or are you using it as an a, ammunition for you need to repent son and uh, are you bringing down the hammer? And that sometimes I feel like we have both been guilty of doing that. And so sometimes uh, it could be us that that is is uh, is maybe saying it in such a way where it is not deemed. And and this is something that we learned. I think it I think it was in Growing Kids God's Way that it, this whole idea of reflective sit time, or I think even the biblical parenting as well, that it, it's it's not a punishment. I mean, it is in some ways. Um, because I, I think it is a, a bit of a consequence because life stops. I think Dave shared about this in the last session. Um, but you really have to try hard to, to make it neutral, a neutral time of really reflecting um, it, it, that it's not uh, necessarily a punishment as it is more of an opportunity to, to, to get uh, become more self-aware for, for the purposes of restoring the relationship. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I just wanted to add, again, assuming you guys watch lesson four and five, you know what we're talking about, but it is based on a scripture in Psalms 4, 4, be angry and do not sin, reflect in your heart while on your bed and be silent. 
you do not have to sit on your bed. That's just what we we did. But you may choose a chair or you may have a child that it's uh, it, it's OK if they walk. They take a walk around the neighborhood if they need to. The goal is to reflect. Why do we do what we do? And we don't want to judge our kids and we don't want to think for them. We, we're in the process of transitioning, helping them think for themselves. And so we've got to give them space to think, why did I just yell at you? And, you know, sometimes if a kid is really, really upset and they haven't really understood the beauty and the good behind times of processing, then, you know, yeah, have them. Why don't you just go take a walk? Um, you know, now it's not a time I, you know, we gave them their phone and said, Hey, why don't you go play a game? I mean, the purpose was to reflect, what am I feeling? Why am I reacting this way? And again, this is all on our lesson. So I don't want to reteach it, but, um, yeah, kids are, you know, again, just depending on what's going on in their life, you know, they might have a hard time with going and sitting. And so don't be legalistic, but the keep like Raul brought up, uh, you know, in non-conflict, talk about the beauty behind self-reflection. They may want to journal, you know, maybe that writing helps them. Maybe they want to talk it through with you. Like you can ask them, like, would you like to talk with me? And we, you know, I won't answer for you, but I can give you some questions to think about. And again, all this is on our resources. So I don't want to get into all that. We'll go on to the next question. But I just wanted to say that you don't have to have them sit on their bed. That just came from that scripture. And just to remind you, that scripture was written to adults. So that's something that Dave and I do too. Like when we get angry and we're we're feeling something or I hurt his feelings, I go and I'm like, hey, let me go. I need to go reflect. I need to figure out what I'm feeling and why am I treating you this way? And then I can get my heart right to go and make it right with him. So it applies yeah, so to the the parents. The only thing I want to add to what's been said so far is that there are in a group this large, there's likely circumstances where you have a child that's like, no, they they, go. they don't want to go sit. And uh, and that's something, you know, we can talk about offline or whatever, but mm -hmm. ultimately, if they're in your house, you're the parent, you are the authority, right? And it really is going to be up to you how important protecting this relationship is. And so it may be that uh, you have a child that you're trying to get them to go sit for and think about an offense. And now there is a new offense. The new offense is I don't want to. And now you're in a fight over that. And, uh, you know, one option is that life is about to stop. So there's no more phone. There's no more car keys. There's no more going to your friend's house. There's no more anything. These, yeah. these are not punishments. Yeah. But we're going to fix our relationship before life goes on. Yeah. Right. And uh, and how you say it matters. Right. If you're angry and you're taking, give me your phone. Give me your now. Now you're into punishment. Right. But yeah. and this is why it's so important that in times of non-conflict, we explain to our children with concrete understanding, how are we going to resolve conflict in the house? What priority does conflict resolution have in the house, right? Um, and then, like I said, there may be some cases where you just need help and you just need intervention. But the goal is to create these habits of the heart, mm -hmm. right? So when a child sins and you say, you know what, honey, what you just said, I don't know what's happening in your heart, but it really hurt my feelings. I'd like for you to just take some time and think about why you said that to me. Well, now they understand why you're having them do that, right? Because you you want to protect the relationships in the house. These are the most important thing. <clears throat> yeah. All right, next question. What do I do if my child goes through the steps of restoring a relationship, but then keeps repeating the same behavior? think that's maybe it's how um they, you know maybe you ask them to take out the trash they say oh i'm so sorry will you please forgive me uh I'll make it right you know i'll take out the trash i'll do better taking out the trash but then the next week goes by they don't take out the trash and then the next week goes by they don't take out the trash um what can we do well i guess my question i forget who signed up for that Raul. Raul did yeah like maybe Raul, you could also answer um what could do you think they've reached godly sorrow if they continue to repeat it? Yeah, actually, it's my wife that's going to share. Oh, oh sorry. 
Yeah, it's this oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, so, <clears throat> so yeah, I have, uh, I guess, two scenarios. Um, one of them was uh, with our son not picking up after himself. Mm -hmm. So he loves to have his uh, lunchtime in the front room, and we were having issues with him leaving something behind. And so we kept talking to him about it, and we kept uh, practicing with him and asking him, and every time he'd say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, mom. I'll go clean it up right now. So he kept forgetting, you know, and so we had a lot of grace with him. But eventually we're like, OK, son, because you continue to forget. Um, well, what are what are some of the things that you can do first? So we, we tried helping him. So first we said, OK, this behavior keeps repeating itself. Let's go ahead and talk about things that you can do to help remind yourself to pick up after yourself. So we talked about that. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And so eventually we said, okay, son, we see now that you continue to forget. And so the next step will be now, tomorrow you won't be allowed to have lunch here uh, because you keep forgetting. And I'm so, forfeiting. yeah, you're, you're forfeiting your, uh, right basically not your right but the privilege of sitting here and eating your lunch uh because you keep forgetting and so we noticed that once we administer the consequence uh, it's gotten better <laughs> it's just something that you know you're just gonna have the, ch the children that are very good at doing something but then there's other things where they just struggle so it could be a character flaw things that we just need to be really patient with the child and, and helping them through the process. But that's one example. And then the other example is uh, when he plays uh, Fortnite and he gets really excited and passionate. But then when he loses because he wants to win so badly, he tends to lose his uh, temper. And so, again, we've talked about well, why is it important for him to remain calm and, you know, be kind to uh, his friends and um, what can he do in that case the moment so anyway same thing same scenario he he would start getting really worked up and so I'd have to go and talk to him after he had his playtime we talked about well what do you how do you think you did and you know if I notice that this continues um then you're not going to be able to to play with your friends because that kind of behavior or what do you think about that behavior so first you draw out the heart and ask him why do you think that's wrong for you to do that and well of course it's wrong because you know i'm losing self-control i'm not being kind to my friends and so after we work through all of that him recognizing it uh how it affects the relationship and how it affects God and how it affects him too physically because he's losing control. Then we move on to, okay, so let's see, what can you do? The moment you start to feel that, you know, buildup of uh, frustration. So he came up with, you know, I, I think I need to just take some time to stop and start breathing. And so he does put that into practice. And there are times where I said, okay, I'm going to help you when I hear that you're getting worked up and I don't hear you calming down. I'm going to go in there to remind you. And so I do that to remind him. But there was a, a time where it just wasn't working, me trying to help him and he wasn't calming himself down. And I had to say, okay, son, because this is something that keeps on going, I had to uh put a implement a um consequence and I said unfortunately you're just gonna have to get off uh you know the game at this point and just take some time to just reflect on what's going on um why do you have to win so bad you know so really drawing out the heart why is it that it's affecting you so much when yeah. you don't win so that's another thing we had to <laughs> go a little bit deeper and be like okay well, why? So, yeah, it's just a step layer and layer and layer, it, it seems like. Yeah. So, go ahead. And I, what I was going to add to that is that I think it's really important that when we when there is uh, an implementation of, of a consequence, 
that it is very clearly communicated that it is not you, the parent, that's taken away uh, something or that you're you're instituting punishment. Uh, because then it 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 that's where I think we went wrong with our daughter is that we just went to punishment. I mean, amongst so many other things that we did wrong was there was um, judgment and punishment. But what that did is it 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 made the child, our daughter, focus more on the punishers than it was on on the consequences of her actions. And so uh, you've got to be very clear that that when there is a consequence that's being instituted, that it is because of their choice, their lack of self-control or whatever, uh, that 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 now has allowed them that they're because of their choices, they're now forfeiting the privileges that they've been given. And and th so that's one thing. And then the other is that whatever consequences that you're going to be instituting, um, that it needs to be related to the uh, to the offense. So, for instance, um, if if the if in this case, like with the, our son not being able to clean up after himself, he would serve it. He would make his own lunch and and sit down in front of the television and have his free time for about I think it was about thirty minutes uh, while he had lunch. And um, but he would leave his dishes there, and 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 uh, and so um, the 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 offense, the I guess the the consequence was that he now forfeited his privilege of of having that free time in front of the television during lunchtime. And that really, um, that I think made sense to him. I don't think it would have made sense if we had, let's say, uh, because he continued to do, uh, not clean up after himself, if we were to implement a consequence that was not as related, maybe him being grounded or not being able to get together with his friends, because they wouldn't, that, I, I think that's where it, it can uh, be the source of a potential bitter root. It's got to be related. Um, I know. Um, I think it was a, a, a family, uh, dear friends of ours, that they uh, mentioned about uh, siblings that were not getting along, and uh, they were having a problem getting along. And and I thought it was beautiful the way that they instituted it because uh, because they continued to have bickering amongst one another, um, they now forfeited the privilege of being able to connect with their friends. Uh, outside of the home, and the thought process is, hey, if if you're not able, if why, how are you? How is it possible for you to con try to connect and, uh, you know, connect with your friends outside of the house when you've got an unresolved uh, issue in the home? And so uh, I thought that was beautiful the way they implemented that, and I think it 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 makes it makes a lot of sense. Excellent. So we are our next lesson is all about the use of consequences and. Uh, and earn freedom. So I'm not going to go uh, more into depth on that right now, but I do want to highlight what Veronica said. Uh, what I love about those two examples is in, in one, the child may really have wanted to repent, but kept forgetting because maybe that's their temperament. They're busy. They forget to do this. Right. And so often parents will get frustrated but just sort of keep giving the kid a pass because, well, I forget too. But remember what uh, the Bible says about godly sorrow, um, that what readiness to see justice done, and at every point you've proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. If a child really wants to repent of something and they realize that their temperament weakness fights against that, they're forgetful, they're not super, then they can do things to help them remember. They can set an alarm every Friday morning at 7 a.m. that blares to tell them to go take the trash out. They can do things. They don't have to be a victim of their temperamental weaknesses, right? And when you see your wife or your child or a friend who embraces their temperamental weakness but then figures out how to overcome it so that they can honor you, that restores relationships. Right. So we don't want to give in uh, to that kind of thing. I, I, so I so appreciate what you shared about that. Um, mm -hmm. Just remember that we sin because we justify. Right. That's why we sin, because we have come up with some justification. And so mom and dad are going to help draw out that justification, help the child move from worldly sorrow to godly sorrow, thinking about themselves to thinking about the impact their sin had on someone else. And then seeking forgiveness, 
with vulnerable confession and then doing what it takes to regain that trust. Those are all so important. Um, and I'll just say this now so I don't forget to say it later that we cannot expect our children to do these things if we are not modeling that behavior for them. It, it's not gonna be a safe place. You can't expect vulnerable confession if you're not vulnerably confessing. You cannot expect a child to seek forgiveness if you are not seeking forgiveness, right? Because it won't be safe. They'll be insecure. Even if they are compelled to do it, they'll be insecure to do it because the house isn't safe. So thank you guys for that answer. That was excellent. Yep. Um, why is it important to help our children understand how they could have handled the situation differently? We kind of touched on that already, but the Salyers, do you have an example? Yeah, fill and breathe. Or add more to that? Yeah, I mean, I think when I think about this question, I think that's it's pretty much it goes back to like lesson one. Just that's my role as parents. God put us in in our kids' lives to help them to be able to make a better choice than they did, and that's what they went through the whole process. And the goal is for them to be able to, you know, because I don't know about you guys, but our teens and our kids they usually will make the same mistake again. Um, and they'll have another opportunity to be in the same situation. And we want to equip them to handle it in a godly way versus the way they handled it the first time. And, you know, God's so, so patient with us and he's put us in similar situations. And so obviously we want to do that with our kids. We want to, you know, give them, you know, scriptures and we want to make sure like, I, I think, you know, a good scripture is first Corinthians ten thirteen that, you know, no sin, you know, no temptation sees you, but, but is what's common to man. And, uh, you know, there is a way out, you know, and I think we want our kids to know that there is a better way. And like Dave said, there, you know, don't, we don't want them to justify their sin, but we want them to, to be able to, you know, handle the, the situation in a godly way the next time. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, you know, the things I think, think about. And there's examples with our, you know, between our, um, uh, you know, our, our teens that uh, sometimes it's between each other. Sometimes it's between parent. Sometimes it's between their own peers. Like, you know, one of our kids tends to to make judgments on her friendships. And, uh, you know, but without really, we have to ask a lot of questions and, you know, and help them, you know, uh, do you really actually know that? And just try to help her, you know, be better equipped, you know, in the future for similar situations. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. I want, oh, you're going to say something? Yeah. No, go ahead and finish it. I was... I, well, I want to tie that. I want to tie Phil's answer into this next question, which is what do I do if the reason my child believes that they sinned is because their sibling or parent friend sinned against them first? Tracy's on that. Um, I know this, this never happens to you guys where one child sins against the other and this child finally reaches the breaking point and snaps against this one. And now you're in this, what do I do? Because you're sort of on the side of this child that snapped, right? Um, so I'm sorry, you said Tracy had you signed up for signed this up. one? Yeah. yeah, Tracy, do you wanna take a stab at that? Or did I surprise you? No, no, no. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> you know, our family is, um, I wouldn't say that we are, you know, experts at any of this. So sometimes I'm like, wait, do I even have the, like, why am I even responding? <laughs> but um, I really, I really like what you said earlier, Dave, that we sin because we justify. And I feel like that um, applies to this as well, right? Um, I do think that, again, for me, because I'm in, uh, and I assume all of us are, that I'm in a stage where I have to make sure that I put our relationship or my relationship with this particular child above the issues. Um, and for me, that's difficult because I want to just like, you know, I mean, you guys know who I, how I am. <laughs> I just want to like go in there and, and take care of things and and address the problems and fix the problems. And I wanna move forward. But this stage of parenting has been very challenging for me in terms of making sure that I'm constantly putting the relationship ahead of the issues. And so 
one of the things I'm learning here in Denver in terms of um, strengthening my relationship with my kids is making sure that I do take time to attune to them and listen to their side of the story, um, to listen to how they're feeling and allow them to have a voice. And really, I think I'm learning to allow them to be human, right? And know that, okay, you know what? I mean, if they did that to me, I would feel that way too. And I don't want to, I think my sinful nature is very self-righteous. And so I, I def and judgmental. So that's something that I'm working on in terms of responding, not just to my, my children, but really to everybody. But once the attuning, you know, or at least once I feel like, you know, I've tried to attune and, and listen to how they're feeling and give them a voice, then I think it is time to really just call each other back to the scriptures, right? That honestly, two wrongs don't make a right. And like what you said, I mean, we don't want to justify our sin because it's sin. like at the end of the day, this is not right. It's, it's unbiblical. And um, there's a better way to handle our hurts and there's a, a better way to handle our pains, you know, and our sorrows. And so, yeah, I think that's how I would probably begin it. But definitely, you know, I grew up in a family where everything got swept under the rug. And so, um, like Tammy said, being so busy, being a single parent, and I'm not co-parenting, then definitely my own sinful nation, nature can, can kick in and I can just be like, oh, okay, I'm too tired to deal with this. But yeah, I think it's, I, um, I know Tammy always instilled in me that Matthew 18 um, says that it's not like, you know, an option that we have to go back to that person that sinned against us and have that conversation, that awkward, difficult, challenging um, conversation that we don't want to have. And um, like, I don't do it all the time. And so I know that, again, me modeling this is key. Um, but at the same time, you know, iron sharpening iron, got to just go back to the truth of the scriptures and, and do what's right if we really want to enjoy God's promises of peace and joy in our home. Yeah, excellent. excellent. That's great. You Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to read, just remember the scripture, Proverbs 18, 17. It says, there are two sides to every story. The first one to speak sounds true until you hear the other side. And one thing Bree shared in the last class we did, she said she would reassure her kids, especially the one that felt like they got sinned against and so they reacted. She just reassured both sides, like, hey, I'm going to hear both of you out. Um, you know, I do care. Um, because, because our kids are just normal. Like they, they're just trying to, they're hurt and they're frustrated and they're resorting to what comes natural to them. And we're the ones that come along and give them another way. We can't shame them for reacting angrily. And when hormones hit in the teen years, wow, you know, we got to help them. We have to have empathy that yes, we all mess up and we lose self-control. I certainly do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, ask my kids. Um, but I just think, uh, I love that scripture though, that we got to hear both sides of the story. And I just wanted to add too, that, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I would get annoyed with my kids back to the last question about, uh, understanding, you know, or giving them a different way to handle things. Sometimes I felt like they should just know this, like how many times have we either talked about it or come on, how do they not know this? Like if you are judging them and not treating them this, the way you would want to be treated by another sister or brother, then we're sinning as the parent. And that script, the second greatest commandment is what really helped me stop being so critical of my children or annoyed, you know, and I still get annoyed, but I catch myself and I'm like, no, if, a, if I hurt a sister, I would want her to come to me kindly and help me. So um, again, I just want to throw that out there. If you find yourself getting really critical of your kids and saying mean things, just, you know, pray and memorize the second greatest commandment, right? And pray and beg the Holy Spirit to help you to treat your kids the way you would want to be treated. And again, how they, how you treat them, one day they will be treating you that way. So, so um, I'm going to say one thing in, in response to this final question, and then we're going to wrap up because we oh, promised you guys an hour. Um, 
So oh. here's what I want to say that um, in that situation where we, I'm going to make this up, but we hear our kids in the other room, one is getting on the other one's nerves in an unrighteous fashion. And finally this one blows up. And now we're like, you know what guys, I'd like you to go sit, figure out what you were thinking. We talk with this one, we hear them out. We talk with this one, we gain both sides of the story. We did not do but we we would require them to do Matthew 18, but they they both may end up having some kind of consequence. And sometimes the one who finally had it and blew up can feel still upset that, well, she or he, but what we would always want to bring that back to is, so when did you first start feeling upset with them? Well, when they first said this to me, did you bring it to their attention that they'd hurt your feelings? No. Well, then what happened? Well, then they said this and it made me mad. Did you bring that to their attention? No. So although they're being sinned against, they are not obeying Matthew 18. They're being a good soldier and they're taking the hits <laughs> and then they finally blow up and lose it, right? And it's easy to jump on their side. I am not saying don't show empathy. What Tracy said, what Tammy said, showing empathy, understanding, getting both sides is so important. But we also need to make sure we're holding our children accountable for their reactions, right? If their boss was saying harsh things or whatever, they would probably, or their teacher in high school, they would probably be able to have self-control. But with their, with their sibling, they decide to just let it go, right? So we want to teach them the more beautiful way to, to stop the conversation, separate if you need to, to gather your thoughts, but then they need to say to their sibling, hey, when you said this, it hurt my feelings and I'm starting to feel angry and I don't want to act in my anger. And then they can resolve it. And if it doesn't work there, then Matthew 18 part two says, go get help from mom or dad and say, I'm, I'm having trouble resolving this situation with my sister. Can you help us resolve it? Right? So we need to hold both children accountable because no justification for sin is ever valid. So do you want to say something? Yeah. So, uh, well, we had one more question, but unfortunately we have run out of time and we have another call at 730. And um, the only thing I would say, um, unless Raul and Tracy can give us like one or two sentences. No, we do not, not at all. have the time. We don't have the time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Guys, thank you so, so, so much for, um, for joining us. We really, really, really appreciate it. Um, if you need help, please reach out. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and this, almost all of it, like the first five minutes, no, but almost all of it is recorded. So if you know people that, uh, you know, could use it, please pass it along. But thank you for sacrificing your time with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Love you guys very much. And thank you for everyone you who participated in answering. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Have a good night, guys. You too, guys. Thank you. Not stopping.